today, we're going to talk about something that I love. One of the most amazing topics in biology is genetics. And particularly, we're going to look at eye color, which people are particularly fascinated with. So let's get to it. So we're going to look at the colored part of the eye today. So I have an eye model to show you. So the colored part of your eye is actually the iris that's in the middle there. The iris is actually a muscle that surrounds the pupil. The pupil is the black part of your eye, so that center part here. And the pupil is really um, important for allowing light to enter the eye so you can actually perceive images and light. And the iris helps to control the size of the pupil. So when the light is very dim, your iris is relaxed and the pupil is very large to let a lot of light in. And when it's very bright, like these lights here, the iris constricts down to make the pupil very small because we don't want to damage the back of the eye, which is the retina. So we're going to look at the genetics of that iris, which is that, again, colored part of your eye. So genetics is an amazing topic, but it's often very complex. So we're going to try and boil it down and make it a little bit simple for you. So we're going to look at eye color, as I talked about before. Um, eye color is a little bit unique because there are multiple genes that control the eye color. So again, the amount of melanin that's put down into your iris. Um, so multiple genes that are found on chromosome 15. So it's the amount of melanin that's put down, but then also the modifying colors. So that's why you can end up with different colors of green and different colors of blue, different colors of brown. But we're going to, again, kind of boil it down to the simple colors. Um, and we know that brown is the dominant color when we're talking about iris, meaning there's more melanin in brown eyes than there are in green eyes. And there are more, there's more melanin in green eyes than there is in blue eyes. So when we talk about these different colors, it's important to remember that we have dominant colors and we have recessive colors. So a dominant trait is a trait where you have a trait that is going to dominate over a recessive color. And when we think about genetics, it's important to remember that all of your genes come from your parents, right? You get half of your genes from mom and half of your genes from dad. So for every trait that you have, including the eye color of your iris, you get one of those alleles, which are variant colors of the genes, one of your alleles from mom and one from dad. And what you get, whether it be dominant or recessive, dictates the color um, that you actually display, and that's called your phenotype. So when we look at these, again, we need to think about some different genetic terms. So we said dominant and recessive. So again, with the dominant trait, you're always going to see that color. Recessive, to display a green or a blue, you have to have those two coming together. Um, and when we look at some other genetic terms, we need to think about the alleles that you get from your parents. So you could get homozygous alleles from your parents. And when you have homozygous alleles, that means it's the same. So say mom gave you brown and dad gave you brown. That would be a homozygous um, genotype for your particular color that would be brown. In the case of a heterozygous um, genotype, you're talking about getting, say, a brown from mom and a green from dad. So that would be heterozygous. Hetero means other. You're getting two different alleles for those colors. So a really fun way to look at genetics, particularly for eye color, is to use Punnett squares. So Punnett squares are a great way to look at what are the potential offspring that parents could have. So you can look at how these alleles could come together to make your particular traits. So we're going to look at some simple Punnett squares at the beginning. We're going to look at a mom and dad who are both homozygous, remember, meaning they have the same alleles for brown eyes. And if we look at this, we can see that dad and mom only have brown alleles or brown genes to give. So when we look at their potential offspring in these Punnett squares, all of their kids are going to have brown eyes. There's no way they could have any other color eyes. Okay? So that's the homozygous situation here. If we look at the homozygous parents, mom and dad, for green eyes, we can see that, again, all they have are green-eyed alleles to give. They're only going to have green-eyed children. Same thing for homozygous blue eyes. So both mom and dad have blue eyes. They only have blue alleles to give. All of their kids are going to have blue eyes as well. So where it gets interesting is where you have parents that are not homozygous for these traits, where you have some heterozygous or a situation where you have a mom with one color and a dad with another color. So in this case, in this Punnett square here, we have a dad who is homozygous, again, same color, for brown, and we have a mom who has green eyes. So when we cross these two people together, every time they have a child, this is the situation that we look at, that we have kids who end up being heterozygous, meaning they have one brown allele and one green. But what happens here is that the green, because it's recessive to that brown, all of these kids will have brown eyes. So this scenario is actually interesting. One of my best friends from college, this is actually her situation with her family. So the dad has green eyes. Um, again, because he has that dominant green over the blue, and she has blue eyes. They have fraternal twins, remember fraternal twins, two eggs with two sperm, so 
genetically independent of each other. They have a girl and a boy. They ended up with a daughter who has green eyes, which would be this situation here, and they have a son that has blue eyes, which would be this situation here. So again, this idea that 50% of the time, this cross right here, you would have kids with blue eyes. 50% of the time, you're going to have kids that have green eyes as well. So it's essentially, again, you're rolling the dice every time there is a fertilization event because you don't know which of the genes you're going to be getting. So that's the beauty of this, these Punnett squares that show you that. Now I have to tell you something that's kind of funny. When I first started dating my husband, and he doesn't know this, so shh, don't tell him that when I first started dating him, I was looking at his particular traits, and I did Punnett squares, and I was like, okay, I think I, could, I can marry this guy because we would have cute kids, and we do, so it worked out okay. <laughs> but shh, don't tell him. In our last scenario here, we actually have all of the alleles of the eye colors here, but we end up with only certain colors of eyes based on, again, what alleles we have. So in this case, dad is brown eyes. He's heterozygous. He has one brown and one green. Mom has green eyes because she is heterozygous here, one green and one blue. When we cross these two parents together, we see that we end up with two kids that have brown eyes because, again, whenever you get a brown, you're going to have those brown eyes, right? It dominates over the green and the blue. In this case, they have 50% of the time they're going to have kids with the brown eyes. 50% of the time they're going to have kids with green eyes. So even though she's got one blue allele to give, because dad doesn't have any blue to give either, there will be no chance that these kids could have blue eyes. 50% of the time they're going to be brown, 50% of the time they're going to be green. So again, it's a really beautiful situation. If you think about eye color is polygenic, we said multiple genes control that. There are, other, there are lots of other traits that are present in us that do that too. So skin color is polygenic. There's actually six genes that control skin color, which is why we have such a huge variety of skin colors. Height is also polygenic. Um, and again, when we think about particular genetic terms that as they apply to eye color, we think about homozygous and heterozygous. So you as an individual are homozygous if you have two alleles that are the same, so brown, brown, green, green, blue, blue, or you're heterozygous. Again, heterozygous meaning you get one color, say green from mom and blue from dad. If you get a green and a blue, we know you're going to display that green phenotype because green is dominant over the blue. So again, it's all about which genes you inherit from your parents. Um, and it's really interesting and amazing to think about these things. Um, and again, people love to talk about eye color. So I'd be glad to chat with you about eye colors as well. People always have questions um, about that. And eye color, genetics, definitely not scary.